Hi friends, this is your tech expert Neil and you are watching HowISolve.com. In this video, I will show you how I converted a battery operated digital wall clock to a solar powered one using parts that was lying around in my home. So technically it's completely free for me but I also provide you the links of the parts that you can buy if you do not have them. Without wasting much time, let's dive into this project. The first thing that I'll cover is the part. So the most obvious thing you will require is the solar panel. The panel that I have used for this project is from a very old rechargeable desk lamp that was not being used. I think this is around more than 5 years old. So the specification of this panel is 7.5 volts and the power generated is around 1.3 watts. As this panel is quite old, I am pretty sure this number of watts generated by this panel might have decreased significantly. But for my project, it's uh, more than sufficient. If you do not have a small solar panel lying around, there are several available on the online market which you can easily purchase. In the video description below, I have provided the best buy links. So do check them out. The best solar panel for our project would be this, it's a 6 volt. 0.6 watt solar panel it's a bit lower on the voltage and the watts than what I have been using for my project but it will work for this purpose but if you place the solar panel in a place where there is no direct sunlight then I would suggest that you use two of these in series so that would increase the voltage from 6 volt to 12 volt that way you'd be sure that the sealed lead acid battery that we'll be using in the project will get the charging voltage of 4.2 volts for a significant amount of time so that it gets fully charged. This is the sealed lead acid battery that I'm using. It's a very small SLA, uh, has a 4 volt cell voltage and a 0.5 amp hours of capacity. So technically only has a 2 watt of capacity. So the solar panel is more than sufficient to fully charge the sealed lead acid battery in one day of full sunlight. This lead acid battery I had extracted from a mosquito zapper bat that electrocute mosquitoes as I had converted its battery to lithium ion battery. I will be posting a video of that soon on this channel so stay tuned for that content. But this is also quite easily available on e-commerce sites. I have provided the link in the video description below. You can check that out. The next most important part is the charging circuit. That is the voltage stabilization circuit. So this is a DC to DC step down converter. As we will be using a higher voltage solar panel. We will be requiring that voltage to be reduced to our lead acid battery charging voltage that is around 4.2 volts so this DC to DC buck converter this will provide us the constant 4.2 voltage required to charge our sealed lead acid battery depending upon the operating voltage of your device you might require two of these step down converters as my device worked on a voltage of 3.5 volts I was able to reduce the 4.2 volts C lead acid battery voltage using a diode but for the most wall clocks the working voltage is around 1.5 volts to 3 volts so if your device does not function at a higher voltage of 4.2 volts provided by the C lead acid battery then you will need two step down converters for this project. The last part required is the diode. This diode I am using it not only as a voltage controlling device but also to prevent the backflow of the current from the sealed lead acid battery to the solar panel. So this is very important if you do not put this diode in between the battery and the solar panel in reverse bias then the battery will discharge completely during the night time. So these are the main four components apart from the device that you will be powering from this mini solar powered project. Using this uh, small setup you can power any device that has an operating voltage of less than 4.2 volts and is practical 
to connect to a solar panel. The popular use cases would involve devices that are stationary and are powered through AA or AAA batteries. Using this setup, you can easily run a device for more than two years and technically it should run till the life of a lead acid battery which is around four to five years. Now let's look at the circuit that we'll be using for our mini solar panel project. So this is a very simple circuit as you can see. The top portion is the charging circuit and the bottom portion is for the running your device. So let's start with that from the top. This is basically the solar panel that we'll be using, the small solar panel. The red wires are the positive connection and the blue wires are the negative connection. This is our step down buck converter. The purpose of this is to provide the sealed lead acid battery over here. The charging constant charging voltage of 4.2 volts. So during the day the voltage generated by the solar panel will fluctuate and the purpose of this buck converter is to make sure that the charging voltage does not exceed 4.2 volt and if the voltage of the solar panel goes below 4.2 volt then of course the buck converter won't be able to boost that because there is no boosting module present in here. It's only a step down converter so, so that has to be kept in mind. To make sure that this solar panel generates a voltage greater than 4.2 volt you either have to make sure that the panel is always exposed to full sunlight or you can use two panels that I had already mentioned in series. That way the working voltage would be around 10 volts for the panel. Okay, then as you can see we'll go forward here. This is the diode that I was speaking about. So as you can see this grey area means the negative portion and the black area is the positive portion. So we have connected this diode in reverse bias. So this will ensure that the current only flows from the step down converter to the sealed lead acid battery and not in the reverse way. But when you connect this diode in between these two units, there will be a voltage drop and it's important that we set the potentiometer that is over here in such a manner that we take in account the voltage drop. So if you want a voltage output of 4.2 volt, the output voltage across this step down converter would be around 4.7 or 4.8 volts because normally a, a short key diode has around 0.75 volts of voltage drop but that also fluctuates depending on the current as this current would be very small when the battery is almost charged. And to be on the safer side, you should keep a voltage difference of about 0.5 volts. So what that means is if you want 4.2 volts of charging voltage, you should make sure that this output generates around 4.7 volts. That way you will be sure that the lead acid battery will get sufficient amount of charging voltage to get fully charged. Okay, after that you can see we have connected the positive terminal to the input of this step down converter that I had said previously. This module I have not kept in my project but it would be useful for most of the people because in my case the voltage required for running this digital wall clock was around 3.5 volts. So I was able to get that voltage by using a diode. But for most cases it would be around 3 volts or 1.5 volts. So it's not advisable to connect diodes to get that kind of voltage because diodes are not very efficient in conversion. To get that reduction in voltage from 4.2 volts to 3 volts I would suggest you get another DC to DC step down converter and that would make the process quite efficient. It has around an efficiency of 80% to 85%. So with this simple circuit you can power any device that has a voltage of less than 4.2 volts and in which it's practical to connect a solar panel. So this is a simple circuit and next I'll show you the video clips that I had taken from the actual circuit in which I had soldered all the components together. So as you can see I have opened up the digital wall clock and this is on the right side the circuit of the clock is present and on the left over here this is the buck converter that I have used to charge the lead acid battery. The lead acid battery I placed behind over here where the compartment of the cell existed. Now what I will be doing is I will be adding a, a DC power jack. Here is the lead acid battery where I tapped. So it would be easier for me to remove and add the solar panel by adding a external DC power jack to it. This is the input and this is the output. This is the power jack that I was talking about. 
I'll be connecting this to this DC jack. So this DC jack would be placed inside the wall clock and it would be easier for me to remove the solar panel. So this is how I've joined the two wires. I've added the DC plug and this is the lead acid battery that I place inside the pencil cell compartment. Doesn't fit properly so this is how I have adjusted it as it's bigger than a pencil cell and over here you can see I made a hole in the case to add the DC power jack and this is how the entire circuit now is connected. So this power jack power, uh, goes straight into the input of our step down converter and as soon as I'll plug this in you will see the red light this indicates that the DC to DC converter is working and you will also see that the clock has also started to function like that so even if I'll remove it you will see that the clock still keeps functioning because of the charge in the lead acid battery here I've removed the solar panel and you can see the clock is still functioning so the lead acid battery has got sufficient charge to support this and this here you can see the diode that I've connected to the lead acid battery and here is the jack now let's see the solar panel installation I've installed the solar panel on my rooftop and this is connected via a long wire and I'll be putting the wire down to the window sill of the first floor roof so this is how I'm installing it this placement of the solar panel on the terrace will ensure that it has got enough amount of light to keep it charged you can see the wire coming through the window here the wire is coming from outside the window through the window sill and into the clock and I have mounted the clock onto the curtain railings and you can see that the red light is working so it means the battery is getting charged the solar panels are providing the voltage providing the current to the clock also at the same time so that's all folks i hope you like this video it takes a lot of effort to create such detailed tutorial videos so if you did like it please please give me a thumbs up and do subscribe to our youtube channel to watch more such interesting videos in the future thanks for watching friends see you later bye